so i will start with the transplantation immunology okay first then i will discuss other portion a bit of comb test so ah yeah another thing is that uh, before starting this transplantation immunology i want to mention one thing in the last mcq exam actually one of you pointed it out um, i have done one mistake in one of the uh, question uh, there was a one question on drug induced hypersensitivity reaction so in the drug induced hypersensitivity reaction actually uh, one word was missing that is hemolysis okay so if the hemolysis word is not there drug induced hypersensitivity can it be anything it can be type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 like if you see lo lots of drugs they can produce allergy then if you see the those cephalosporin group of antibiotic they can produce this drug induced hemolysis that is also type 2 hypersensitivity reaction if you consider vaccines serum sickness that is type 3 reaction and penicillin in the book it is written it can generate all the four types of hypersensitivity reactions so uh, so today i will discuss this uh, transplantation so uh, okay i was uh, where we were there okay and the hypersensitivity so hemolysis word was missing that's why it can be answer can be anything so type 1 type 2 treatment doesn't matter it was our mistake only in formulating the question so i will start this uh, transplantation immunology i think you have gone through the presentation it's quite new topic important also you see uh, already you must have so much of idea about the transplantation isn't it you have heard about the kidney transplant it is a quite common tra transplant then the bone marrow transplant for those leukemia lymphoma patient so if you see the transplantation actually the need of the transplantation is for going for centuries but however it was not there because of this lack in the say surgical skills and the newer techniques now if you see the whenever we say the transplantation it can be anything it can be a transplantation of cell from one organ to another like you have heard about the bone marrow transplantation so bone marrow transplantation what we do we usually uh, transfer to stem cells stem cells from uh, say in from one side to another side okay so it can be a tissue also like skin graft you uh, so he, here the tissue that like that means skin is used as a uh, uh, uses a graft then sometimes it may be organ as as you know that this kidney liver all these things are basically that will come under the uh, organ transplant so it can be a, maybe a cell maybe a tissue or maybe organ we have developed this much of surgical skills so surgical skills is dev developed so we can do that transplantation but where, where, where is the major hurdle the major hurdle is the immune systems because the immune systems are developed like that it will always try to reject a foreign body so whenever you are doing the uh, organ, uh, this uh, transplant unless it is a autograft so it is a foreign in nature so you are transferring from one individual to another individual for or say one species to another species so obviously the immune system will recognize them to, to be foreign systems so it, the immune system should be activated antibodies are developed or maybe sometimes in cases uh, the cell, cell mediated cytotoxins are activated and ultimately leading to the, this rejection. So, major hurdle is the basically the immune system. So, immune system are not allowing this organ transplant to go free flow. However, obviously, the drugs are there, now the drugs are there, anti, uh, specific antibodies are there. Use of these drugs and antibodies, they have some, somehow, somehow they have uh, increased the lifespan of your organ transplant. However, Whenever we say organ transplant, uh, hardly you will find that is a lifelong transplant. Okay, it may be the transplant may work for two years, maybe five years. In the book, it is written that uh, even with that so, so much of development, so much of development, ten years survival is only fifty percent. Okay, that means after ten years again, we have to do, do the reorgan transplant. So this is very much important. You might get short notes. What are the types of graft? Autograft. That means that is from the same individual. Okay. From say there is a barn, one barn patient is there. So he has bar, if it is a barn patient, then if the graft is required, say from the medial aspect of the thigh, the graft is taken. So it is a autograft from one part of the body to another. Okay. Mind it, autograft. That means it is the same individual. Or sometimes you say you have heard about this coronary artery graft, is not it? Coronary artery is bypass graft. So their femur part of the femur artery is taken as a part to to make the reconstruct the coronary artery, the obstructed or thrombosed coronary artery. 
so that is the these are the examples of autograph sometimes it can be isographed isograph means they are not from the single individual but genetically they are they should be similar now that is only possible whenever there is a monozygotic twins okay even the dizygotic twins will not under isograph dizygotic twins means that means they are the different individuals i monozygotic twins that means genetically they are the single individual so majority of the practically whatever you will feel that uh, uh, this allo uh, this one uh, organ transplant majority you will find that it is the allograft okay allograft and autograft autograft is common in the sense that say hair transplant this uh, uh, and then sometimes you will find the bone marrow transplant okay stem cells are taken from the same individual and it is again polyphyetic in vitro and again it is injected third is the allograph that means the individuals are different so say mother has given the one organ to the uh, to 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 her child okay or father has given one organ to the child okay or say one individual has donated one organ to another you have heard about this uh, cornea cornea donation so all are mostly it will come under allograft okay even the dizygotic twins, if the twins are there, but they are dizygotic, they will also come under allograft. Now, HH xenograft, that means one species to another species. You may think that, okay, xenograft practically not possible, but, but the thing is that there are lots of xenograft is still going on, like hard, hard valve replacement. So those valves are basically where from you will get this, either they are the bovine or porcine. So, xenograft is also quite common, especially those heart valves, the avascular heart, heart valves. So, because the genetic, now if you see the, all these four graphs, autograph, isograph, allograft, and xenograft, the first two, autograft and isograft, because they are genetically quite similar, so there is a less chance of generation of antibodies or any, you can see, activation on the immune systems. So, they are easily, they are acceptable, okay, that means these graphs are easily accepted by the recipient because autograft is from same individual from one side to another okay the last two allograft and xenograft because they are genetically dissimilar especially the xenograft this is uh, genetically quite dissimilar so there will be hardly there will be the acceptance so you have to modify it modify it, your immune system modi modify your techniques you have to go for massive uh, test to check the immune systems okay Now, regarding the rejection of a allograft, that means from one individual to another, absolute, the major, major issue that what are the different types of that allograft rejection you will find. The, the, whenever they say you are uh, transferring one graft from one individual, from say autograft, usually you will find that after seven days, five to seven days, there is a vascularization. I think there is a one slide is there. Yeah, the first, first column. First column is the acceptance of a iso isograft. Okay, there you can see the say say you are doing the isograft, the, say skin graft. Okay, skin graft. Say you have grafted the skin to the re recipient site, and you will find that within seven days there will be revascularization will occur. You can see those vas those uh, blood vessels they are growing and they are gradually they are uh they are they are growing in that graft portion that means the donor portion and ultimately it will be that portion will be revascularized and the graft survival will occur but the middle one if you see there is a yellow graft rejection here you can see for say up to seven days say three to seven days the vascularization only occur whenever till the vascularization is occurred the graft will persist or you can say the bar graft will be alive but once the vascularization is occurs in the middle one, the middle column, you can see the vascularization has occurred in the graft portion. That means it is carrying all those cells, all the inflammatory cells, these lymphocytes, neutrophils, macrophages, monocytes. So these are the, as you know, these are the, they are these macrophages, neutrophils, they are the non-specific, um, the non-specific inflammatory cells. So they will cause the initiation of the inflammation and leading to the massive necrosis and ultimately the graft will be rejected okay so middle one is the allograft rejection last one you can see that is for the it is called second set rejection that means this is an example of a one individual who has previously 
got a graph from previous exposure of a graph. That means this is the second time whenever you are uh, you are transferring a graph to a particular individual. There is a hyper acute rejection type of reaction will occur where pre-existing antibodies will immediately cause the destruction of the graph within five six days. Okay, so here you can see the third one that is third column. You can see the blood vessel has not developed yet. Okay, still the destruction has occurred. That means the before the blood vessel has developed, the destruction has occurred. The middle one, the destruction or the graph rejection has occurred only after the vascularization has occurred. Okay, this is the basic difference. So obviously the uh, the middle one that is allograft rejection or first set rejection it takes a bit longer time 12 to 14 days but the this uh, the second second one the massive destruction we did it can occur three four days or sometimes you may fight five to six within five to six days it will be the whole destruction process will be completed okay now what is the then uh, in the allograft rejection what who, who are the major key player the major key player is a T cell. It can be evidenced by like mice, those mice which are, which are lack thymus, that means there is a no maturation of the T lymphocytes. So those mice can accept the allograft very easily, even they can accept the xenograft also, that means they can accept the graft from the other, other species also. Similarly, say one individual, the mid, say middle one. Middle one is the allograft rejection, primary set rejection. That means this is the first time whenever you are grafting an individual, the graft rejection can be completed within 12 to 14 days. But in the second, the third one, you can see that because they are already has the exposure to the previous graft, so their destruction can be more faster, maybe within five to six days. So this type of reaction, the second type of rejection can occur if you take T cells from a one individual who has previously exposed with allograft and injected to a particular individual who has never experienced any grafts okay so there the second type of rejection you can initiate that means in the first individual he has exposure say if there is two individual a and b in the individual a he has the exposure to previous graft okay whereas the b there is no exposure now, if you take the cells, T cells from a individual A and inject to B, the second set of rejection can occur in the, in the second individual also. That means the graph rejection, the one of the major player is the T cells. So third type, that is the second set rejection, you can develop in an individual by transferring the T cells from the middle one. Okay. And if you see the uh, these uh, T lymphocytes, who, who are the T, T lymphocytes that mediate the graft rejection, it is basically both the helper and cytotoxic T cell, or you can say CD4 and CD8. Now, experiment with allograft says that the this curve you can see in the graft rejection, who are the major role? Major role is mostly mostly from the CD4. If you remove the CD8 from an individual, CD8 cells, that means cytotoxic cell from an individual, and you allow the graft, the graft survival will be same as that of control. That means CD8 cells or cytotoxic T cell has less effect on the survival of a particular graft. But in the middle one, you can see if you using anti-CD4 antibodies, that means CD4 cells has been removed from the circulation. So graft survival has been increased. Obviously, third one, if you remove both the CD4 and CD8, graph survival will be quite longer. That means CD4 has lo lonely it is responsible for this graph survival and CD8 only assists the CD4. If you remove the CD8 and CD4 from the circulation, the graph survival will be more. But CD8 HS alone, it, there is a less effect on the survival of the graft. So basically CD8 complements the CD4 activity. Now, if we see the immune immune activation, the major hurdle in the uh, major hurdle in the graft is the basically immune activation. Now, the immune system to minimize the immune activation, there's the, the, the major 
A major issue is the MHC proteins. This MHC antigen, or you can know this MHC and this uh, MHC proteins. Basically, they are basically they are expressed from the human leukocyte antigen HLA. So HLA is the major hurdle in the graft donors and recipients mismatching. Okay. So as you know, so if the graft has to be transferred from one individual to another, so the the one primary requirement is that that blood group should be same. Okay, ABO blood group should be same because as you know, this ABO blood group antigens basically the human leukocyte antigen. So, so ABO antibodies are already present in the circulation. Already, these are the IgM class of antibodies, so they are very much effective in the complement activation. So, if you may, if you transfer one graph from a different ABO individual, what will happen? The, the graft, the antibodies present in the recipient antibodies they will IgM class of antibodies they will immediately cause the cell lysis with the help of complement so immediately the graph will be rejected so the one thing one requirement is that that blood grouping that uh, ABO grouping should be it should be matched so you might get short notes on HLA typing human leukocyte antigen typing uh, one that is the one requirement for graph uh, transfer so it can be done by using this this is known also my microcytotoxicity test here what we do you can see the right side top diagram in a slide you take the both the samples from the recipient say there is a one recipient and two donor you don't know which donor or which donor will be compatible with the recipient okay so your wbcs are from the donors as well the recipients are taken and they are serially diluted in a serially taken in a micro plate micro tractor plate then different antibodies to mhc1 and mhc2 are added and ultimately it was and it is uh, checked for the uh, uh, cytotoxic that means if the antibodies are uh, added because after antibody you have to add this complement also after incubation you are adding some complement also so anti so complement will complement the uh, antibody mediated cell lysis so in the say uh, in the in the top was the diagram the recipient and donor one their their antigenic structure is mostly similar so they are more compatible than donor two you can see the donor two because they are they you can find that these antibodies they are producing color under different antigens that means that means these are not genetically similar with the recipient so donor one and recipient is more genetically similar so principle is like that you take the wbcs okay take the wbcs incubate with antibodies now if the uh, uh, cells is expressing the antigen against that antibody obviously the antibody will bind it okay now you are adding complement the complement will cause cell lysis then you add some dye okay like tipandu or eosin just these dyes are basically added to know that whether the cell lysis has occurred because otherwise how will you know the cell lysis has occurred if the cell lysis has occurred that means cell if cells die the dye will leak that means dye, dye will go inside the cell and it will stain the cell okay so microtractor plate if, where you will get the color that means the antigen antibody has reaction has occurred and you know which antibody you have added to which well so you know that which antigen has been expressed by the particular wbc so this is known as microcytotoxicity test this is done for HLA typing. There is also another uh, way by which you can do the matching of the MHC protein that is known as mixed lymphocyte reaction. Here what we do, we take this uh, WBC from the donor as a responder or uh, sorry as a stimulator. So what we do, we actually usually this lymphocyte are quite they are sensitive to the x-ray radiation. So if you uh, give the x-ray radiation so what will happen the lymphocytes the msc protein msc proteins on the lymphocytes will be expressed okay there will be the msc proteins will be expressed more on the lymphocytes in the donor cells now now this uh, the, the donor lymphocytes they are now exposed to the recipient lymphocytes okay now, if the donor lymphocytes are expressing one particular MHC protein, one particular MHC protein, and this MHC protein is proliferating the uh, these T lymphocytes on the particular recipient, that means 
in future if you do the organ transplant it will put of that particular donor it will produce the immune response in a particular individual in the recipient individuals okay the middle second one you can see there is a this uh, incorporation of this particular uh, lymphocytes from the donor it has not proliferated proliferated the t lymphocytes in the recipient so the second one is more safe okay first one because this uh, stimulator t lymphocyte that means donor lymphocyte has uh, your uh, donor lymphocyte they have uh, uh, they have uh, stimulated the uh, recipient t lymphocytes that means in future also if we uh, transfer the graft from the donor to recipient it will produce the immune response so yeah, the first one you cannot accept the second one you can accept okay this is known as mix, mixed lymphocyte reaction in fact this mixed lymphocyte reaction is more practical than this particular hla typing if because in exactly you may not get the exact hla typing matching still you can do sometimes the graft rejection uh, sorry the graft transfer using this mixed lymphocyte reaction but the one drawback is that it takes time now you see there are lots of organ transplant has occurred because of this especially from the accident victims uh, from the accident victims the donor that means they are acting as a donor so these organs are transferred to some required uh, recipient individuals so since mixed lymphocyte reaction uh mixed lymphocyte reaction takes time so you, you cannot use this one for for uh, transplant from a cadaver okay and another issue is that uh, one thing is that how do you know that this uh, t cell cells t cells are uh, stimulated for this you have to use this radioactive thymidine you know, you know that thymidine radioactive thymidine because if the t cells have been activated that means they are proliferated more that means dna synthesis has occurred more now if you are ready using this uh, radioactive thymidine that means more radioactivity will be produced if that t cells has proliferated by this way you can know that this t cells has been proliferated now again in the organ wise also this hla matching is more important for the kidney and bone marrow transplant whereas the solid organ like liver or maybe heart transplant it is a bit even the minor amount of mismatching will do but in case of kidney and bone marrow you require more uh, uh, matching in the hla and another importance is that already we have gone through this one where yeah that cd is CD8 has less effect on the acceptance of a particular graft. The reason is that in the book it is written that CD8 basically this cytotoxic cell they recognize mostly the MHC1 protein. So MHC1 protein they are also recognized by one killer inhibitive peptides on the natural killer cells. As you know the natural killer cells are non-specific non inflammatory cells. They can cause the message destruction of the target tissue. And this killer inhibitory peptide receptor, they are basically they are recognized as MHC class one protein. So MHC class one protein, whenever it is uh, ex uh, whenever it is expressed by, as you know, it is expressed by all cells. So these MHC one proteins will basically they can recognize this killer inhibitory peptide receptor, and ultimately it will cause the inhibition of the cell for entire cell legacy. That's why. The effect of CD8 mismatching is a bit less important in case of graft survival. Then, uh, even if you do the measuring MHC, still you will find that there ultimately in the long term there is some amount of graft rejection will occur. Okay, and this uh, graft rejection will be because of the minor histocompatibility com complex, unless it is genetically similar, like isograft or say autograft. <coughs> There, there will be some amount of minor uh, uh, mismatching in the histocompatibility complex and ultimately in the long term you will find that a rejection. Then you, uh, uh, the, this uh, cell mediated rejection of the graft as you know that this uh, mostly the rejection uh, is uh, because of the CD4 or CD8 cells. So the, like the other uh, hypersensitive reaction it also has two phases sensitization phase and effector phase and if you see the cell mediated uh, this rejection basically two types of rejection can occur either it may be a delayed type of hypersensitive reaction as we have studied the hypersensitive reactions or it may be the cd8 mediated cell mediated cytotoxicity 
so in the sensitization phase once the graph has been transferred from a donor to a recipient those antigen presenting cells like dendritic cell it is quite uh, uh, predominant in the uh, in the uh, skin graph say so this dendritic cell expresses the mhc2 proteins so these uh, mhc2 proteins they did dendritic cells they since they are uh, they are expressing the mhc2 protein that means they are showing the t cells that these are the foreign proteins so it will activate the t cells in the recipient recipient t cells and this recipient t, t cells will be gradually it will be stimulated also you will find that some of the antigen presenting cells now what are the antigen presenting cells it may be a b lymphocyte it may be a dendritic cells okay it may be macrophages so some of the antigen presenting cell from the host origin that means from the recipient one from the recipient will also cross the um, uh, the border and ultimately it will be available in the grafted tissue so in the grafted tissue it will uh, it will uh, it will take some of the proteins from the grafted tissue and it will also express the mhc1 and mhc2 proteins okay and ultimately the t lymphocytes in the recipient will be activated here there are some antigen presenting cells especially the dendritic cells from the whole this is from the graft but these dendritic cells what will do they they will be carried to the various limb nodes and thymus to the recipient so these antigen presenting cells that means these dendritic cells they can will migrate from the graft tissue to the recipient lymphocyte uh, lymph node and thymus and ultimately it will it will cause the negative selection that means it can produce the tolerance in case of the in, in case of uh, uh, tolerance in the recipient blood so placenta leukocyte is important in the sense that before doing the blood uh, this one graft from a say individual a to b so if you give blood transfusion repeatedly from individual a to b it will produce some amount of tolerance because of this the same effect of these passenger leukocytes so these passenger leukocytes are nothing they are basically dendritic cells these dendritic cells mind it these are from the uh, from the uh, from the grafted portion that means they are the, from the donor portion so they will be migrated to the various limb nodes thymus and ultimately it will put it as you know that negative that will negative selection that means it will generate the tolerance immune tolerance in the particular recipient blood so it's the same thing you can do it by repeatedly doing the blood transfusions okay before doing the graft uh, besides this uh, dendritic cell obviously the langerhans cells langerhans cells they are also uh, antigen presenting cells plus endothelial cells they also expresses the huge amount of mhc1 and mhc2 protein and all can generate the induce the t cell proliferation in case of recipient okay In the effector phase, these activated T lymphocytes, macrophages, they produce the massive cell lysis because they, as you know, that uh, these T cells, the CD8 mediated cell lysis, then CD4, CD, CD4, they will assist the activation of those macrophages, and ultimately both CD4, CD8, and along with the macrophages, it will cause the massive destruction of the cell lysis, and ultimately the graft will be rejected from the particular site. And uh, sometimes you will find that there will be some amount of this type 4 hypersensitivity reaction also where as you know in the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction in the effector phase the cytokines will be released from this uh, DTH cells that means the CD4 cells. These cytokines will again activate the macrophages or other antigen presenting cells and ultimately there is a massive infiltration of these macrophages. Mono monocytes will be modified and monocytes will be matured to the macrophages, tissue macrophages and these tissue macrophages will cause the massive destruction of the graft. Now come to the clinical manifestations. What are the different manifestations of a graft rejection? The same thing, whenever you are say transferring one graft from one individual to another individual, basically there are three types of uh, rejection it can occur, hyper acute rejections. Hyperacute rejection is the here in this example it is the third one. The hyperacute rejection the problem is that the rejection will occur before the graft is revascularized. You can see the third one the graft is rejected before the vascularization has occurred and the reason is a, there is a presence of pre-existing antibodies. 
the middle one the acute rejection which will occur we will start within 10 days and ultimately completed by 12 to 14 days is the the middle one okay here the rejection rejection will be mostly occur whenever the vascularization process has started and mostly we will find that this type of graft rejection is mostly because of the cell mediated the t cell mediated either cd4 cd8 macrophages because for this activation centration and effector phase it requires a bit time that's why the graft rejection a bit slow than the hyperacute rejection and third one is the conic rejection conic rejection yeah, it may take months years already i have told that only 50 percent of the grafts will survive after 10 years that means after 10 years also the immune immune system can activate it and ultimately it will cause the rejection of the graft so only graft rejection exact cause is not known it may be both cell mediated as well as the anti-mediated immune response so first one is the hyperacute rejection that means the here it is the last one that means before the vascularization has started so already i have told that there is a pre-existing there is a chance that pre-existing antibodies may be there against the uh, particular donor graft and ultimately these antibodies immediately they will they will go and bind with this allo antigens and whenever they will bind it will it will also recruit the complements and as you know that complements are very much active in uh, in their uh, neutrophil chemotactic factor this complement products c3a 5a c5b67 these are the chemo neutrophil chemotactic factors so they will cause the recruitment of lots of neutrophils to, as you know neutrophils are non-specific inflammatory cells they will cause massive cell lysis it will cause the damage of the particular organ or a particular graft and ultimately you will find with the damaged tissue there are lots of platelet will coagulate platelet will aggregate and ultimately this aggregated platelet will cause the thrombosis and embolism of the particular graft and ultimately the graft will be rejected the difference with the other graft rejection is that it occurs immediately okay before the graft is revascularized reason already i have told that uh, pre-existing antibody now there are some many senses that if a particular individual he has received many times blood transfusions now mind it this blood transfusion is not like that immunotolerance or like patients are leukocyte this is the blood transfusion from different individuals okay if a particular individual he has received so many times from different blood transfusion from different individuals with each uh, uh, with each blood transfusion he is getting some amount of uh, anti allo antigens antigens from the different individuals and ultimately these antigens will develop antibodies and sometimes it may be uh, coincident that these antibodies has exactly they can bind with the particular donor donor graft and ultimately cause the uh, rejection immediately and and, in, and another issue is that in pregnancy repeated pregnancy repeated pregnancy because these are uh, because uh, from the fetus you know, this paternal allogens are exposed and ultimately these uh, paternal side allogens ultimately it will uh, induce the immune response in case of omen and ultimately these antibodies will be persist and these antibodies can immediately cause the immediate graft rejection and uh, and another is that in the in this uh, second set rejection the third one third one was basically though whenever there is already this particular individual he has already received graft say one particular individual he has uh, received one graft say three years before then after three years again he has to go for another organ transplant the second then he, since he was already grafted so and there will be pre-existing antibodies will be there and these pre-existing antibodies can immediately cause the graft rejection or you can say the hyperacute rejection or second set rejection then the acute rejection already i have told that acute rejection uh, we have studied so much of about the this cd4 and cd8 mediated this uh, acute rejection acute rejection approximately it will be completed within 12 to 14 days the middle one here the difference with the hyperacute rejection is that you require the first revascularization process revascularization whenever revascularization will occur then when it is carrying this t lymphocytes macrophages and ultimately it will cause the this rejection of a particular graft 
then the chronic rejection chronic rejection is inevitable no graft will survive lifelong so it is a very rare chance that graft will be unless it is the auto or isograft for allograft and genograft the life whole life that is quite rare so uh, this chronic rejection it may occur after months years and it is very one of the problem of this chronic rejection is it is very difficult to control it so use of these immunosuppressives and other immuno, immunomodulators they can somehow they increase the graph uh, 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 reduce the risk of graph rejection however this chronic rejection is not basically prevented by any one of the drugs okay this hyperacute rejection or acute rejection you can control by using those drugs or any immunomodal drugs but chronic rejection is not basically prevented by most of the cases because there are because of the uh, different pathogenesis both the antibody mediated both the cell mediated and there and mismatch with the minor histocompatible complexes now let's discuss a bit of uh, general immunosuppressive therapy the uh, before giving the grafts you have to suppress the immunity of a particular recipient okay if the if you reduce the immunity of a uh, recipient obviously the graft rejection will be less so tolerance will be a bit higher but there is also some problem if you generalize immunosuppress a particular individual if you reduce the immunity obviously the particular individual will have more chance of infection okay or say <clears throat> another issue is that uh, uh, say you are for say uh, say say the, the our reason was uh, to to immunosuppress but uh, you see those uh, uh, epithelial cells or the bone marrow bone marrow they are, they are not only producing the this uh, t lymphocytes also they are producing the hematopoietic cells so by doing the immunosuppression basically you are reducing the hemato hematopoiesis also ultimately these individuals will be more suffer from the anemia and there is a evidence has showed that there is a with long term immunosuppressive treatment can lead to the generation of the cancer hypertension and those bone diseases like osteoporosis so these are the mostly uh, for general immunosuppressive these are the mostly the drugs are used as a type of I think it is already discussed in the your genetic classes. Basically, as that happen is a basically inhibitor which will inhibit the synthesis of you know, IMP, inosine monophosphate. As you know from IMP, you can get the IMP and GMP. So this pyridine nucleotide synthesis will be inhibited if you give as a thiopine. And corticosteroid, the, the mocodos, it can do the anti has the anti-inflammatory effect. So it will reduce the inflammation. Okay, so the graft rejection will, will be less. Then you can use other antibiotics that are coming from those fungal metabolites like cyclosporine, tecrolimus. Basically, they are the interleukin-2 inhibitors. As you know, the interleukin-2, these cytokines are basically secreted from the, uh, from the CD4 cells. So if you inhibit this uh, interleukin-2, obviously the graft rejection will be less. Then this X-ray radiation, lymphoid X-ray radiation, the, the thing is that uh, this x-ray these t cells or lymphoid cells they are very much sensitive to x-rays so if you x-ray if you give the x-ray radiation ultimately the the activation of t lymphocytes will be less and if you selectively especially give the x-ray radiation so if you are not giving the x-ray radiation of the uh, uh, lympho, uh, the stem cells in the hematopoietic stem cells obviously the hematopoietic stem cells stem cells casually they will proliferate and ultimately they can produce the hematopoiesis then also there is some specific uh, immunosuppressive therapy like you can use some antibodies like as you know that cd3 cd3 it is expressed by both, both by the t, t lymphocytes that means cd4 t lymphocytes and cd8 t lymphocytes if you use the cd3 antibodies so ultimately the cd3 antibodies will we eliminate the uh, this T lymphocytes from the circulations, whereas the B lymphocytes will be not affected, other cells will be not affected, and ultimately it can cause the specific uh, immunosuppressive therapy. And another strategy is that using the diphtheria toxins, where what we do with the antibodies, we take with diphtheria toxins. Whenever antibodies will go and bind with the T lymphocytes, it will cause the uh, because 
and these antibodies has uh, uh, antibodies as you know these fc receptors can that they can can bind with the phagocytic cells so so these antibodies whenever they will go and bind to these particular t lymphocytes ultimately it will be since they are tagged with diphtheria toxins so diphtheria toxin will be incorporated inside the cells and it will cause the cell lysis of the t lymphocytes and ultimately in this way you can selectively basically immunosuppress a particular recipient by which you can increase the uh, survival of a particular graft so transplantation immunology i think that much is sufficient in the book there are lots of things are there i have immediately so this is because of this pre existing antibodies pre existing antibodies will cause the graft rejection immediately the acute rejection it takes time approximately 10 to 14 days you can say 12 to 14 days so basically it is cell mediated so it requires time to develop this immune response and usually the rejection is complete within 10 to 14 days or 12 to 14 days and third is the chronic rejection chronic rejection it may take months years so it may be because of this pre-existing antibodies maybe because of this t, uh, t cell mediated and uh, chronic rejection is inevitable you cannot control it till now the exact pathogenesis is known, not known, maybe because of the mismatch in the minor histocompatibility complexes or maybe because of these those LO, allogens that were not able to detect with the existing modalities. So this may ultimately lead to the generation of this particular conic rejection. I think that much sufficient on this transplantation immunology. So any question on this transplantation immunology? Okay, that day also I have discussed about this comb test. Uh, comb test, comb test as it is, as you know, it is used for to diagnose the autoimmune hemolytic anemia. You will get short note in the comb test, and it may it might get short note in the exam. So basically, it is used for autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So basically, there is two types of comb test. One is the direct comb test, and second is the indirect comb test. Direct comb test is against the ICG and complement or you can say these are the hot antibodies and indirect is basically it is the IgM mediated you can say it is the cold antibodies sometimes you might in the MCQs also you might get MCQ in the PGN test also but regarding this cold antibodies and hot antibodies so dicum test that is ICG mediated you will find mostly in the autoimmune hemolytic anemia, SLE, then lymphoma, leukemia. These are hot antibodies because these are IgG mediated and these are very much effective at whenever at 37 degrees centigrade. Okay, so the hemolysis will occur at the 37 degrees centigrade. That's why these are known as hot antibodies. Basic pathogenesis is that yeah antibodies that IgG class of antibodies are produced in the body and it will coat the RBCs but as you know that IgG they are very much effective in opsonin they can they are very much effective as a opsonization that means they will coat it coat a foreign things but they are not effective in activating the complement okay IgM as they are pentameric in nature so they are mostly it is they are more uh, effective in activating the complement. So IgG, since they can act as opsonin, so they will opsonize the RBCs. That means they will code, code the RBCs. Okay, and as you know, these antibodies they have FC portion plus this complement C3B as a acts as a ligand to FC receptors in the your macrophages. Okay, this uh, you, uh, because this C3P product that is basically they, they have a receptor in the uh, complement receptor 1 complement receptor 1 already one question came in the exam so they this uh, complement receptors they are there in the macrophages in the spleen so whenever those RBCs coated with these antibodies and C3B whenever they will cross to spleen those spleen macrophages will take up those uh, RBCs coated with antibody and it will cause the phagocytosis and ultimately it will cause the destruction of the RBCs from the circulation. So here the destruction has occurred in the spleen okay because IgG has coated 
obviously complement some amount of complement will be there especially the ctp so those will assist the removal of these rbcs from the circulation and it will occur in the spleen okay so how to do this part particular direct complex mind it pathogenesis here yeah, rbc is coated with igg class of antibody so what we will do we take the rbc of the patient suspected patient and it anti human immunoglobulin now those rbc mind it these obcs already coated with immunoglobulin but this immunoglobulin are not able to lyse it lyse the rbc in fact these are removed from the circulation at the spleen or other reticular interference system so whenever you are adding anti human immunoglobulin that means these immunoglobulins or these antibodies they either uh, develop in the rabbit or got obviously those antibodies will react with the human antibody because for a antibody for in the got or rabbit origin human antibody will be antigen only so this and human anti human immunoglobulin will cause the cross linking of this existing uh, coated antibody and it will cause the lysis of the rbcs okay and obviously lysis of the rbc you can detect in normal optical microscope also you just take the blood take the rbcs suspend the rbc add anti human immunoglobulin and wait and after incubation period specific incubation period you will find that there is a lysis of the rbcs and you can you can easily see in the under the optical microscope second is the indirect comb test as you know this is the igm mediated and igm are basically they they are very much effective in the activating the complements so these so these igm antibodies they will go and bind with the rbcs and it will since they are very much effective in activating the complement it will cause the lysis of the rbc but the thing is that the lysis will mostly occur in the cold part of the body okay at 4 degree centigrade okay not at 37 degree centigrade here basically what do we do our our problem is that we are suspecting that igm antibodies are there in the particular individual so we take the patient serum not the blood in the direct one we take the patient rbc here difference is that we are taking patient serum okay because the immunoglobin will be now present in the serum because we are concerned about the igm class of antibodies now we take the patient serum which will have igm okay now this igm class of uh, against this you add some amount of your uh, sorry with this particular uh, uh, serum that means it has antibodies so you add some amount of antigen known antigen say you are suspecting the uh, antibodies ag against the d antigen so you use the d antigen so the antigen antibody reaction will be occur and these igms are very much affecting in activating the complement and immediately agglutination will occur okay so this is about the comb test direct and indirect direct is basically igg mediated it is a called hall antibodies and indirect is mostly it is the igm mediated and it is also known as cold antibodies so in the exam you might get short question so that much on this transplantation immunology and comb test any question on both the topic? No, sir. No. Uh, okay. If there is any confusion, you go through the book. Book is there. Is that it? Kumtes, I think it must maybe there in the QV or not. This one too, I have taken from Harrison. Doesn't matter. Just simple only. Okay. Thank you.